This video is going to be about the cumulative distribution function. Now, this is a super long name, so it is often just abbreviated to CDF, and that's what we're going to do in this class as well. So the cumulative distribution function is a function defined relative to a specific distribution, just like a density function is. We're going to define this function in terms of a density function, though technically speaking, it's kind of a backwards uh, definition. It's a backwards way to think about the definition in terms of like the higher level mathematics. But since that level of mathematics is beyond us in this course anyway, we're going to do just fine to define cumulative distribution functions in terms of a density function from a specific distribution. So I'm going to motivate the idea by doing a quick recap of quantiles and trying to emphasize the difference between quantiles and the CDF. Then I'm going to give us a formal definition, and then we'll look at some plots in R. So here we go. Um, quick recap of quantiles. So I'd like you to recall that quantiles correspond to a picture, at least on a normal distribution, like this. We are interested in the value QP, Q subscript P, for some P. So it's like we know P, know what percentage we want. And we are looking for the value on the x-axis that gives us that percentage less than that value. So we've got to solve this integral equation where the integral up to this point is equal to the p we want. Okay. The cumulative distribution function takes this idea and kind of flips it on its head. In the case of the cumulative distribution function, we know the value on the x-axis, and we're asking what value p is found in the area to the left of the value x. Now, we're actually defining a function here, so I want you to think of this as if x is moving along the x-axis. How does this probability to the left of the value x change? How does this p change as x goes off to the right? OK, so that's how we're going to motivate our definition. For a density function, f, the CDF, is usually called capital X. If you had a density function G, they'd call the CDF capital G. It's just the capital um, letter of whatever the density function is. And it is defined as an expectation of an indicator function from negative infinity up to the value x. But in this case, we know the value x. So you're just plugging in the value x into the function. So one more time with a couple of pictures, and then we'll get r to draw some more formal plots. You know the value x. You're going to plug it in um, to your integral. And you're going to ask, what is the probability to the left of the value x? as x moves along the x-axis. So you can see on a normal distribution like this, you're going to slowly accumulate area under the, under the density function to the left of the value x, hence the name cumulative distribution function. As x grows, you will slowly accumulate area. So it'll grow slowly, slowly. It'll grow really fast. And then as x keeps on going, it'll kind of taper off and grow slowly again. Now, we know that all the area under the function is, and under a density function is equal to 1. So this CDF should start out near 0 when x is way down here in the left tail. And as x grows on a normal distribution, the CDF will grow slowly and then grow fast and then grow slowly again. Now, what I'm going to do in more plots in R is contrast that to a gamma distribution that looks like this, 
for some value x on the x-axis as we imagine x growing, we are interested in the probability to the left of that value x. Now, as you can see on a gamma distribution that looks like this, it will grow from zero when you start at x equals zero. It'll grow really fast and then slowly taper off until you get to a probability equal to one because this is still a density function. So all the area under the density function is equal to one. So let's just dive into R and look at these two examples, a normal distribution and a gamma distribution. So we're going to go back to our friend curve. We're going to start with the function with the letter P on the normal distribution, because now we are finding a probability. So this time, different from quantile, when we are finding the value on the x-axis, we are now finding the probability based on some value x. So we're finding P. So the function we'll use starts with the letter P. We're going to say from equals negative 5, 2, 5, and we're going to draw with um, 301 points here. So there it is. And just as I was saying, the cumulative distribution function for the normal distribution starts off growing slow and then grows rapidly and then tapers off again. And it converges up here to 1 because the total amount of area under the normal density function is equal to 1. So let's add to that the function p gamma, which is going to start just above 0. It's going to go up into 5. We're going to color it different just so we can differentiate the um, axes. We're going to add it to this plot so we can compare the growth rate for both of these next to each other. And let's get a little wild and just put CDF on the uh, Y axis label. Let's see if all that works. Oh, whoops. OK, so it happens. Shape equals to 1 and rate equals to 1. I'm just kind of making those up for the example here. And you can see now here in orange, just as I was saying before, oh, my Y label didn't change as I wanted it to. That's OK. Just as I was saying before, the cumulative distribution function for the gamma distribution that I drew in the notes grows really quickly. The CDF for that gamma distribution goes really quickly from 0 and then tapers off as you get further into the right tail. And just like all other density functions, the cumulative distribution function will converge to 1 as x goes off to positive infinity, since all of the area under any density function is equal to 1. Cumulative distribution functions won't come up a lot for us, but they're a good keyword to know in the world of statistics. They do come up time and again, especially since they are kind of uh, inversely but very closely related to quantiles.